So what we're gonna do right now is go into a video about how people who are dumb are often better socially. People who are intellectually slow often think that they're highly, highly intelligent. And people that are very, very intelligent actually view themselves as dumb. The reason why is because if you're smart, you realize there's all these other geniuses out there, this massive world, limitations to our own ability to understand. And yet people who are dumb, kind of like Kenny Powers in Eastbound and Down, if you've ever seen that, they're just like, yo, on demand, yo. You might have seen the beginning of the movie Idiocracy, where um, there's this one couple and they keep waiting to have children. And they're like, we couldn't do that now. The market's just not right. And then there's some, they, there's this, then it, then it flashes these people who live in a trailer park. And, uh, and the people who live in a trailer park, like this guy, he has like a hundred offspring or something like that. <laughs> and the reason why it happens is because, you know, he just wins the football game. He's like, yeah, we won. We're all going to have some fun tonight. You know, it's just like having fun. And you know, the, the guy who's like, you know, the market's just not quite right. There's all this danger here. I don't know if it's good enough. It's like a big issue, right? You've even seen where some children that are geniuses are actually late talkers. They actually learn to talk later and they're ge they become geniuses. And the reason why that can happen is because even a baby that's highly, highly intelligent may realize that when they're speaking, it's not perfect. So it's that perfectionism and that high degree of intellect that you might have that can actually mess you up, where somebody who's 10% as smart as you is like, what's up, yo? You know, they're having way too much fun, and they wind up doing better socially. This is also why, personally myself, I didn't speak till the age of 16, uh, and that was the first time I uttered a word, and now you see why. Now, now just that example there, right? A dumb little joke like that, most people would be like, oh, it's a little cheesy. I don't know about that 16-year-old speaking joke. Hey, if you find it funny, Ha! and it's congruent and you are certain and you own it, then those vibes, that mood is contagious and people will love it versus, let's just say you take someone else, right? Like another cheesy joke, Julian 2.0 walking up here and being like, actually, here's a much better joke. And it's one that's like studied and tested in front of crowds and every word is perfect. The delivery, it's like very intellectual and it's like, do you like it, right? Did, was it very smart? Do you see the intellect and the genius behind this? Not necessarily as funny, it's just like, uh, whatever, right? There was actually a client, anytime we talk about this, I have a flash. This is in um, London, way back in the day. We were out and uh, he was just never laughing or smiling and everyone else was. And I go up and I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, well, you know, I just don't really resonate with, um, you know, simpleton humor or dumb humor, right? I'm a, I'm a pretty sophisticated person. I need very sophisticated jokes or to, 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 for me to say and for me to laugh. And I'm like, no, no, no dumb it down and this is uh, at the time there was that song uh, gang what is it gangnam, gangnam style? style and i was like do the dance do the dance and he's like i don't know and he started doing it and eventually we finally got him to a point where he's laughing but he just couldn't comprehend how something so simple and dumb is like the gangnam style dance would actually generate amazing social responses versus the sophisticated joke and it really comes down to that right it's like hey bring it down own it and what people are really attuned with is again the vibe behind it it's not the words it's not the perfect intellectual logical thing it's hey how loose are you how carefree are you how just certain are you that's a big part too if you're like second guessing or looking at different reactions as you say something or say the joke and you're like could it be better oh it could have been better and then you start self-attacking not good when it comes to socializing right or let's just say breaking down, analyzing your skills. Yes, like a video here, very intellectual, an intellectual breakdown. But when it comes to in the moment socializing, the dumber you can be, quote unquote dumb, the better. Oftentimes, people are just way too smart that it actually hurts them when it comes to their social skills. And one more thing here with this, this doesn't mean, because this could be something that pops in your mind, well, I don't want to attract people with just like dumb humor, I want to attract those intellectual yeah. ones. Everyone is attracted to this. Everyone, you can go to the most sophisticated person. Like we go into these networking events, we'll talk to people who are much more externally successful than us and we'll go in with the dumb humor and they will love it. And they'll actually get drawn in because they're like, wow, I can't do that. Oh, a chance to just kind of relax and just bask in it. Oh, and the certainty and the congruency, yes. I'm gonna tell you a story that really, really made this hit home for me. I was with a buddy of mine and we met two people that we really, really liked and we wound up inviting them out to the uh, Getty Malibu. And the Getty Malibu is a beautiful art museum. And my new friend's really into art. And so I want to look really cool and sophisticated. You know, I've said a little bit of this stuff. So I'm like, oh, the art's like this. And you know, that's quite interesting, the pattern and being very classy and so on. And my buddy, who's just as smart as me, but he was smarter in this case, he's like, look at that thing. 
kind of looks like my finger. <laughs> and he's doing that. And the person who he's with is like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, right? And the person who I'm with is just like, oh, yeah, uh, cool. And I'm like, oh, no, but look at this and look at that, right? And I got in this mode where I was a little bit self-qualifying, but also a little bit too logical. Now, does that mean that there isn't some way that you could meet someone and, say, go to a, a museum and talk about art in a rational way that could work? I'm sure there could. Look, you can break every rule. I'm not, you, you know, there, there's so many different variables there, you know, that could have resulted in that. But ultimately, I was, one, very logical, two, self-qualifying, because I'm trying to be smart, and what's happening is my self-qualification is coming across where it's messing with something called the buyer-seller dynamic. And so because I'm trying to be intelligent, it comes across like I care too much, and what matters more is the frame and the buyer-seller dynamic and not looking like I'm wanting something. And so my buddy, even though what he was saying, he's like, ha ha, look at that, it looks like this, ha ha ha. Like, I mean, that's my imitation of it, but like, that kind of is what it was. I feel like what we often do is we work so hard on either getting money or getting shape or our intellect that we almost, like we're so invested in it that our, we almost have like a fantasy of meeting people out who would appreciate the intellect, appreciate the sophistication, the humor, appreciate the business that we built. And, and, and that would justify all the pain and the struggle and the, the personal deprivation that it took, the challenge and the, and the dragon slaying that it took to build these skills. What you realize over time is that it's more about the self-amusement, the energy, and of course the frame that you're the person who is the chooser and they're the person who is fortunate to be talking to you. And that's where, again, that Dunning-Kruger effect kicks in where somebody who's kind of dumb is like, it's like my finger, ha ha ha, like they think it's amazing. They think they're the best. And then weirdly, they often wind up getting better social results. And of course, yeah. you'll say that, that you're smarter than them. Like, well then, why do I care that people want, like someone who's dumb? But at the end of the day, there is an intelligence to that. It's just a different form of intelligence called social intelligence. And the other big question to ask yourself is how much of your intellect did you cultivate really in reaction to not feeling good enough? You can remember that old movie, The Social Network, where Mark Zuckerberg's character, you know, he goes to meet someone, it doesn't work out, and he comes back, he's like, we'll build it bigger, we'll build the Facebook bigger, right? And it's coming from self-qualification. How much of who you are today was truly built proactively and how much was built reactively and in this form of self-qualification, and especially in terms of social skills, how much can you actually reclaim that frame, beginning to maybe let your own guard down, beginning to enjoy life a little bit more, maybe you're beginning to be a little bit more dumb, not because you're dumb, but because you've trained your mind in an intelligent fashion to enjoy life more. Yeah, it also really comes down to understanding the different, you could say, channels of communication, right? Of course, there's the surface one that we're all aware of, right? The words, so say you're like, here's the art piece, and did you know that da da da, like that's the words, and people try to only play on that playing field, right? Just the words without realizing that there are deeper channels that are much more powerful, okay? Those more invisible channels like the buyer-seller dynamic, something to be aware of, right? The vibe behind it, your subcommunications, how amused by it you actually are. Right, and of course, this doesn't mean that you can never say, for example, something smart. You can, but the distinction is, are you saying it as a form of self-qualification to impress the other person, or is it something that you genuinely find funny and you would just say for yourself, okay? But until you really cultivate that feel for self-amusement, it can be beneficial to temporarily dumb down what you say on a verbal level. Because just as Owen mentioned, even if you say the perfect thing, and we all have that fantasy, right? If I could just say the perfect words, and I remember back in the day, I would even practice what I'm saying. I'm like, let me practice at home so I have that perfect delivery. Every word is just calculated, the tonality. Uh, again, this is back in 2006. I'm in like my room just reading again and again and again. And even if it were to come off, say, perfectly, what would happen? It would just look way too try hard, especially with someone who you just met where they're like, wait a minute, you don't even really know me. We just met and you're going above and beyond with all that. Like something's a little weird. Something's a little bit off. Lack of personal boundaries. Yeah, like lack of personal boundaries versus just dumbing it down and just being like, you know what? I'm so carefree, not even that invested, so above it that I can just drop that little self-criticizing voice. Is this good enough? Is that good enough? And just let it flow. And there's no challenge. There's not. There's no. There's no next layer to get to. Uh, where they can peel out that added layer of vulnerability from you to get behind that and they don't feel special to get behind that because everyone's allowed behind that. Yeah, it's like, oh, whoa, there's no barrier of entry. I'm already at level 10. There's no steps to getting to know someone, right? And on both parties, that's part of it. It's like, hey, let's get to know someone. Oh, here's the fun surface layer. Great. And as time goes on, as both people start investing, then of course you can start peeling back, right? Okay, relaxing a little bit, but 
If you're trying to go in with that, I'm really smart, look how smart I am, not good. This is a really nuanced point too, because yes, you want to be aware, again, of the other person's, say, value system and calibrate and make sure the way you're saying is connecting with them. But at the same time, there's also that other principle where your reality, your rules, right? You can try to be like, let me live up to your standards. You can be like, this is my standard. And if you're super certain and, again, congruent and people sense it and funny and you're not doing it trying to agenda-based, you're just purely doing it for you, people will really get sucked into that. And that's something too that you might notice if you travel and say you go to countries where they don't speak the same language or not as well, suddenly all your little smart words, you're like, well, I can't resort to that. And it really gets you in touch with what we're talking about here, like the fundamentals, like behind what makes someone funny, what makes someone engaging, what is actual true self-amusement, and it really comes down to this. Again, that's another nugget that I feel like people will almost, it'll fly over their head. Could you explain what it's like to say be in Brazil or a place like that and really not know Portuguese or maybe, you know, obrigado, you know, things like oh, that, yeah. but you know, you, don't, you don't know a ton and it, and it really, really gets you in touch because you go meet people and you cannot speak, this, if, if you cannot speak the same language, you really learn a ton about frames and body language and vocal tonality and all that. It is incredibly eye-opening to do that. Yeah, I mean, basically I would just learn like maybe four to five words, right? Like, hi, love, tourist or something like that and then just alternate between these and it would really come down to like making it's in the sounds it's in the the texture of the sub communications like even going up and just be like hey like stuff like that would actually be much more captivating than the perfect line in whatever language and right? i can tell you this also when i was in brazil i had the experience where i would do that and it would be going well and then as soon as i actually would break out my rudimentary portuguese or see if they could do english you'd see the vibe go like it was immediate and that was that was also what got me to think about it yeah but you must familiarize yourself with this right it's like hey if i can't just go on the verbal layer what are those deeper layers right and again you could look at well then there's the tonality right the way i talk how loud i am the body language but even just the intention behind this right another key exercise is look at yourself in the mirror and say without moving your face no facial expression see if you can communicate i am angry and you can't be like it's just neutral face that there that's the channel of frames right so for example if i'm like ooh, 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 it's like you like me i am funny we are having a blast this is funny that frame that's where people get a feel and they're like hmm how certain how congruent then there's subcommunications. then there's words and actually a deeper one too is people look at just your overall level of self-esteem so there's actually four key channels what you say how you say it your intention behind it that's the level of frames and your self-worth get in touch with that much more powerful than just obsessing over the verbals and again doesn't mean you can't say very smart things if you're like super amused like I've done this too where I just try to appear overly smart like say I say hi to someone whatever they're saying I just keep linking it back to my intellect so I'm like well it's someone who's very intellectual you see da, 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 da. it's like well do you like the weather well it's someone who's intellectual you see that the weather is actually and if you do it in that fun way it works but if it's do you like it? Do you see how smart I am? For real, not as a joke, but for real, tanks. If you're very, very logical, I wanna wrap up with a very logical idea. For regular life, high standards, all the way. High survival standards. For social skills, low standards. <laughs> okay, so in other words, I want you to collapse your frame to where you feel like you're winning easily. So in regular life, you want to have high standards and you want to say to yourself, you know what, nothing but the best. I've got unlimited aspiration, unlimited ambition, I'm going to the top. But with social skills, the top is the bottom. What I want you to do is like, think of the point A to point B and I want you to collapse them. Okay, point A to point B and collapse them. In other words, you are awesome now. What you're saying is awesome because it comes from you. What you have to say is interesting because you find it interesting. What you have to say is funny because you find it funny. What you have to say is cool because you like the feeling of the words coming out of your mouth. Collapse that, collapse that, that point A to point B, okay? Collapse your frame there. And I want you to think about it like attractive, socially attractive. Basically what it is, is whoever has shrunk that criteria the most is the most attractive, okay? Which is a bit crazy to think about. Again, we can make counter examples. You know, what about a homeless person on crack who like thinks it's cool, okay? You can go into these extreme counter examples. We, you know, you can poke holes in this. So. It, don't don't make us sit here and like counteract every counter example like we know them too we get them too but just take the 
take what you can see that we intend to mean rather than distorting the intention beyond what we're saying and just collapse the frame and challenge yourself. If you want to be great, challenge yourself to be great at shrinking the gap between what you say and your criteria for success for it to be worth saying. Yeah, and if you really don't get this and you're like, oh, but this, then once more, perhaps you're not that smart. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> right? If you're like, well, what about it? No, the, you don't understand the calibration A, then maybe you're dumb. Uh, so one last little point here too. This also goes hand in hand with just learning how to laugh at yourself and not taking yourself too seriously, right? You could, this could be a great first step. Perhaps see if you can find it funny, even if your mind's like, this is so dumb. I can't believe I'm saying this dumb thing. Can you perhaps find it funny that there you are saying such a dumb thing? Right, and perhaps even challenge yourself. Hey, could I perhaps hook someone socially, hook their attention with something so dumb or something so boring, just purely focusing on the vibe at hand? Okay, that's final great exercise. Go out and try socializing and see how quote unquote dumb, quote unquote boring you can be. So you can't go to your crutch of trying to find the perfect logical smart words and you're just left with those more hidden yet more powerful channels of communication. So. Hey, the first dumb day for the rest of your dumb life, you got this.